Hi, this is me. My name is Claudia Dornbush, and for the past 10 years, I have been involved in helping organizations around the globe design and develop their virtual classroom programs. I am here to share with you some best practices on how to use the most common functionalities of synchronous software platforms for the benefit of creating engaging interactions that will enhance participant learning and retention. The virtual classroom, a synchronous form of e-learning, has been embraced by many organizations in their attempt to promote workforce learning while trying to cut travel time and costs associated with face-to-face instructor-led training. However, many of those responsible for creating and implementing the virtual classroom are new to this form of multimedia learning and as such fall into the trap of assuming that synchronous classrooms are simply recreations of traditional classroom settings. Let me clearly point out that they are not. Why? Because training in a virtual classroom eliminates the body language social cues that we take for granted in face-to-face instructor-led training sessions. You, as a facilitator, don't have the subtle nuances to let you know when users are disengaged. In other words, you have no way of knowing if while you are covering critical content, the participants are texting on their Blackberries, checking emails, or simply catching some Zs. So how do we make sure participants are engaged, paying attention, and actually retaining the materials that we are covering? Planning and facilitating frequent and relevant interactions is probably the single most important thing you can do to create effective virtual classroom sessions. As a rule of thumb, you want to create interactions and have participants do something every three to five minutes. These interactions might be with the other participants, with the instructor, with the platform, or with a participant workbook. But you must be careful when designing them. It's not just adding interactions for interactivity's sake. These interactions must have a purpose. They must be carefully thought out and must support the learning objectives while at the same time supporting learner attention. As part of our initiative to help companies adapt their instructor-led training to a virtual classroom, we have used many synchronous software platforms. Each one of these has different functionalities, so I've included the most common ones in this video. Before designing the exercises and activities in your virtual classroom training, it is important that you thoroughly understand the platform you will be using and its corresponding functionalities. Let's begin. The first thing I want to talk about is the visuals you use in your presentation. In the synchronous virtual classroom, visuals in conjunction with your voice are the main tool you will use to engage participants, communicate content, and promote active learning. First and foremost, when designing virtual classroom materials, limit the amount of text used on the screens and opt for visuals. But be careful, visuals can improve attention and learning or they can detract from learning. A large number of visuals and instructional materials serve no useful learning function but are simply decorative. We need to make sure that the visuals we use are relevant and appropriate for the audience and that they support the instructional objectives. In other words, we don't want to overload the learner with irrelevant visuals and the necessary audio that will hinder the learner's ability to process new content in ways that result in the storage of new skills and knowledge in long-term memory. Let's discuss the use of whiteboards. Whiteboards allow trainers and participants to post ideas on a shared space. It is a mistake to think of the whiteboard simply as a flip chart. Whiteboard exercises can be truly interactive and collaborative. For example, you can use the whiteboard to capture expectations at the beginning of a class and revisit them at the end of the program, and of course to capture participants' ideas throughout. Use the annotation tools when using the whiteboard to focus learners on important points or concepts. Highlight a main idea, underline a critical term, circle the visual representation of an important concept. You get the idea, but again, be careful with overusing these tools. They must serve an instructional purpose. You can also ask participants to annotate on the whiteboard while you moderate a discussion. Whiteboards can also be used for icebreakers like crossword puzzles or Jeopardy games, just to name a few. Remember, games can be very engaging and useful to reinforce concepts. Let's continue with text-based chat, which allows the participants and trainer to communicate with one another through text messaging. It is most commonly used to ask open-ended questions or request technical assistance. 
Chat exercises engage those learners who need to stay active. Using chat ensures that everyone can have his or her opinion heard by at least the trainer, if not everyone in the classroom. If participants are chatting about content-related ideas, it can provide clues to the trainer. Perhaps the content presented is too difficult for some in the audience. If there is a sharp increase in text communication, it is probably a good time to wrap up your thoughts, take a break, or review the information presented. To create collaborative exercises using chat, you can use it as a brainstorming tool where participants share as many ideas as possible in a short period of time. You can use it to copy and paste pre-written questions and exercise instructions that you want to use, or to have participants answer questions directly in the chat. Just a tip here though, to maximize participation, ask participants to type in their answers but not press send until you say so. Breakout rooms offer an excellent way to increase participant engagement. They are used just as you would use them for any small group activity in the face-to-face -face classroom. You can break the class into small groups to explore case studies or complete group exercises, or to make each group share a different software application. You can use other tools like the whiteboard or synchronized web browser within each breakout room. Groups should be small enough to promote everyone's involvement, but large and diverse enough to yield different perspectives to an exercise or activity. Breakout activities should be structured and brief. Provide a focused exercise or scenario. A leader should be assigned for each group. The leader should start the activity, ensure everyone participates, and serve as the spokesperson when you bring all the groups back into the main room to debrief. Always monitor the discussions in each breakout room and provide feedback as needed. Polls help you get a quick check on the pulse of the class and allow the participants to apprise the trainer on the pace and clarity of the content. Polls can be used to get feedback from participants and as surveys as well. In addition, you can use polls to quickly administer questions and give the participants the opportunity to respond all at once. Polling works best with questions with two to five response options. Polls are typically created in advance and activated at the appropriate time in the session. Some helpful tips. Use surveys and polls to determine whether the participants understand the material. Use surveys to transition to a new topic by asking questions about the new topic gauging participant knowledge, and then commenting on the results. Create icebreakers and introductory exercises by polling the audience. Share results with the class to foster a sense of community. Asking participants to provide feedback can be a good re-engagement technique if the audience is not participating. And anonymous feedback allows participants to be honest without worrying about repercussions. Adding the ability to hear other participants adds another level of potential engagement. Every time the participant is presented with another voice, the opportunity exists to re-engage him or her. Discussion is one of the most effective ways to enhance collaborative exercises, so don't rely exclusively on one voice delivering all of the training. Different tools have different icons available, but the most common ones are the smiley face, confused face, applause, raise your hand, agree or yes, and disagree or no. These icons are invaluable tools to increase participation and engage participants. They are also useful to identify confusion or understanding. You should ask participants frequently throughout the session if they understand everything or if they have any questions and encourage participants to use the icons to answer. You should also encourage spontaneous use of the icons. Participants should feel that they can raise their hand to ask a question at any moment, or they can applaud a colleague's response if they find it useful. All this will help participants feel engaged and encourage active participation throughout the session. So there you have it, using different functionalities to deliver engaging virtual classes in under 10 minutes. Remember that frequent and effective use of your platform's functionalities is the single most important technique for successful virtual training session. I hope you liked this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Before I let you go, I have some homework for you. Open up your email and send me an email letting me know what you thought of this video and how it could be improved. Feel free to ask me any questions you might still have. Oh, and thanks for watching.